This is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. We are going to continue our discussion about the glymphatic system of the brain and the cognitive decline and the prevention or stalling or reduction of that decline, especially dementia and even then especially Alzheimer's disease. This is the second last discussion in this series. In the next series, we'll talk about alcohol and the chronic stress. Today, we're going to talk about exercise and omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids or fish oils. So let's start our discussion. So before we look at the discussion, a couple of things. First of all, this is the flccc.net or covid19criticalcare.com. So if you go in here, look at this, heroes among us. Then treatment protocols, there are various protocols over here, medical evidence, COVID resources, lots of educational material, etc. This is one. Then here is the paper that we are going to be discussing. This is a paper that we have been discussing for some days now. I have that paper open here in the PDF format as well. And in this paper, we have already discussed majority of these things. So we're going to talk about the omega-3 consumption and then we're going to talk about the exercise. So let's start. So quick preview of the previous discussions. We know that the glymphatic system of the brain. So we have had this discussion before that this is a blood vessel artery that is bringing in the blood. That blood cannot enter the brain tissue or the interstitium without being filtered and selectively managed. So parts of the blood or nutrients are taken out. So these are taken out from these blood vessels as we have done before. Then outside the blood vessels is a collar-like structure that is sleeving the blood vessel and this is the astrocyte foot process. And then in the foot process, there are water channels called aquaporin-4. There are actually 21 types of these channels. We are just concerned with the aquaporin-4. Now in this sleeve here, we also have CSF present. So the nutrients and substances that are pulled out of the blood vessel are mixed with the CSF. And then that mixture moves out through the aquaporin-4 and in the interstitium of the brain. Then it washes away the waste products present there. It washes away especially the beta amyloids or the other proteinaceous material that is accumulating like trash that is accumulating in the brain. And finally, what happens is that convection current of the fluids finally reaches the venous end and then it goes back in the venous end in a similar structure that some of the substances will become part or will enter the vein while other substances or bigger molecules or proteinaceous material that cannot be easily taken out through the blood vessel these would enter the sleeve-like structure here as well, which is called perivascular or paravascular space. And from there, the lymphatic fluid now will be drained in the deep cervical lymph nodes and from there back in the cardiovascular system. So we've done this in detail before as well. I just wanted to make sure that we are comfortable. Now, keep in mind that the objective of the brain to keep the cognitive faculties correct and sharp and not decline, the objective is to not allow any trash to accumulate in the brain tissue. And for that, it is important that this convection of the fluid movement through the brain tissue is happening unobstructed and is occurring with rapid enough and frequent enough volume and pressure that the trash is cleared out. Any issue with that any obstruction or interference with that will cause brain tissues function problem, especially leading us towards dementia and other cognitive issues, even memory issues. So one big component of that is, we have discussed this in the past as well, are these astrocytes. So we've seen that the astrocytes are making these sleeves or their foot processes are making these sleeves and these sleeves around the blood vessels have these channels, aquaporin-4, which are responsible to bring the fluids out, correct? Now, here is an astrocyte. These are its foot processes. And these little 
black dots that I've made, these are the Aquaporin 4 channels. Majority of these channels, Aquaporin 4, are present on the foot process of the astrocyte and not on the cell body of the astrocyte. This is called polarization of the aquaporin channels. What do we mean by that? What we mean is the channels are polarized. They are within one cell, accumulated, aggregated towards the feet and are absent on the body. However, as we age and as we have inflammatory conditions or other conditions that can cause the astrocyte to become activated, then what happens is the newer channels that are produced can actually be produced on the body of the astrocyte and lesser of them are produced on the foot processes. This is called depolarization of the aquaporin channels or simply aquaporin channels are now not concentrated on the foot processes. That means if these are the aquaporin channels needed to move the CSF and the blood vascular system's nutrients out into the tissue, and if they are absent, if they're not present, then how will we get sufficient fluid coming out with sufficient pressure and volume to wash the brain? That is the problem. So that means we do not want astrocyte activation. We do not want the polarity or polarization of aquaporins to be lost. We want aquaporins to stay polarized and stay on the feet. So keep this in mind, this is a context, and now let's look at the omega-3s. So omega-3, or the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids or fish oil, can either be taken as part of diet, or we can supplement them. We produce them in our own body as well. So the ones that are produced, inside the body are going to be called endogenous omega-3. The one that we would take with diet or as supplementation is going to be called exogenous omega-3. Interestingly, both endogenous and exogenous omega-3 does the same function. So that means as we age, it is important for us to start taking the supplementation or start having diets that offer more omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids. Now what happens? When the omega-3 is present, it causes the inhibition of astrocyte activation. Now you might say that, well, we want the cells to be activated. Yeah, that is correct. But astrocyte, when they become activated, they would cause new aquaporins to be produced. And those aquaporins will be produced on their body and other places. And the polarity of aquaporin from the foot process will go away. And that is really bad. And our brain actually tries to counter that. In our younger ages, we do not have to, but as we start aging further, this polarity starts becoming lost. And our brain tries to counter that, and one way to counter that is that brain uses omega-3, which helps the astrocytes to stay non-active and aquaporins to stay polarized. So, omega-3 inhibits the activation of astrocyte, which in turn prevents any loss of aquaporin for polarization. That means it prevents this situation where aquaporin 4s are now sitting everywhere other than the foot processes. Then, as we prevent the loss of polarization, that means the aquaporins would stay on the foot process in the right place and the fluid movement from the brain, the interstitial fluid volume and the movement would stay correct and the amyloid beta that is accumulating in the brain in all of us will be washed away correctly, which would then mean we'll have lesser amyloid caused injury, which will then mean a reduced progression towards dementia. Or even if somebody has mild cases of Alzheimer's disease, for example, there will be a reduction in progression of that disease. So, dietary intake improves cognition. Dietary intake of omega-3 improves cognition in mild Alzheimer's disease. Supplementation, so intake is that you're taking food and that has omega-3. And then supplementation is that you're taking those caplets of the omega-3 or fish oil. Supplementation demonstrates higher CSF influx and clearance. So they have been observing them in the mice models that they're giving them these omega-3 or having them go through the other activities and then observing the CSF movement. 
So supplementation of omega-3 demonstrates higher CSF influx. Higher CSF influx will mean higher amount of clearance or convection of fluids through the interstitial spaces of the brain and that would mean higher amount of clearance. That would mean less beta amyloids. That would mean less chances of Alzheimer's disease or dementia's progression. Now, the question that could be in your mind is, sure, we are saying that this is omega-3. Maybe omega-3 is doing this, but not through the astrocyte, but not through the aquaporins. Maybe the mechanism is something else. So what they did was, they took mice in which they had knocked out their aquaporin-4 genes. So these were the mice these who were not able to produce aquaporin-4 channels. Then they gave these mice a lot of fish oil. So if now fish oil had a mechanism that would be other, that would work by not using the aquaporin-4, but some other way, if that was the case, then this mouse would have the effect of fish oil on their cognition. But it turned out that the mice that were aquaporin-4 deficient, when you give them fish oil, there is no change in these mice's cognitive decline, which proves that the omega-3 works by affecting aquaporin-4 polarization. The second thing is, when the aquaporin-4 were knocked out and the fish oil was given, there was no observation of glymphatic flow change. So the result is that omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids, they delay or prevent Alzheimer's disease by improving glymphatic transport and reducing amyloid aggregation. And it makes sense that as soon as you keep the aquaporins in the correct place, that is in the foot processes, that would allow the glymphatic flow to occur, which would in turn allow the amyloids or the other trash or the waste products that are being produced to be washed away, then the brain would stay pristine and healthy and it would continue to perform correctly. And of course, Alzheimer's disease and other dementia-like situations and memory issues will be stalled. So that is the omega-3. It simply means we should have fish oil as a regular component of our food or our intake. And now the second part, exercise. And as I said, alcohol consumption and the chronic stress. We'll discuss that in the next one and then this series will close. So exercise. Bulk glymphatic flow is accelerated by physical training. And I think it is understandable. It is a mechanical thing. And notably improves both memory and cognition in neurodegenerative diseases. Voluntary running, this is important, voluntary running over a six-week duration restored protein homeostasis in the brain, reduced inflammation by decreasing the activation of microglia and astrocytes, improved cognition and reduced the deposition of amyloid beta through an increase in glymphatic clearance but showed no effect on the blood-brain barrier permeability. So, voluntary running for six weeks did not change the permeability of the blood-brain barrier, which is a good thing. We do not want the blood-brain barrier to have a higher permeability. So the increased flow of CSF and the increased flow of the glymphatic fluid was not because the blood-brain barrier became more permeable. We didn't want that and that didn't happen. Good. But still, there was more flow of glymphatics. So that was, of course, related to the astrocytes and their loss of activation, which is very good, that would also mean that they would stay polarized, which is also very good. That means aquaporin force will be present at the right place and they would be functioning correctly. In addition to this, six weeks of physical exercise accelerated glymphatic clearance and reduced amyloid beta accumulation by increasing the movement of interstitial fluid. So this is why I have been saying that anyone who has cognitive decline, brain fog, memory issues, because of vaccine injury or because of long COVID or COVID or other reasons, the deep cervical neck massage and the head and neck massage and the full body massage is very important because it allows the body's lymphatic fluids to move, which also means glymphatic fluids 
movement as well, which is very, very protective. Aquaporin-4 expression in the cortex was also found to be higher along the paravascular spaces in the exercise group. So not only the movement due to mechanical effect was increased, but the aquaporin on the foot processes of the astrocytes increased in number as well. That would mean there will be more interstitial fluid produced and more fluid movement through the interstitial spaces of the brain and more clearing and cleaning of the brain. This improved aquaporin-4 polarization, meaning more aquaporin-4 in the foot processes. We, we like that idea. Led to a decrease in both amyloid plaque and neuroinflammation. So when astrocytes are not activated, they are not causing inflammation. Plus, when there is more fluid moving through the brain, it is moving the plaques away. These findings are consistent with the benefits of exercise on brain health and cognition in the elderly and demonstrates the usefulness of exercise as a neuroprotective lifestyle choice for brain aging and neurodegeneration. According to the WHO, beneficial amounts of exercise consist of at least 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise a week. So this is the discussion. Next week, we've already discussed intermittent fasting. I'll go over alcohol consumption and chronic stress. So these are the pieces that we'll discuss next week. Today, fish oil and the exercise. Again, the idea is to add fish oil to your diet or have diets with the fish oil or add that as a supplementation plus 150 minutes of light exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise per week is important to have. Thank you very much. See you next time.